Hello, wonderful parents. I'm Dr. G, your go-to board-certified pediatrician and a mom just like many of you out there. The warmer weather is upon us and it's time we talk about those tiny little creatures that love our kids as much as we do, bugs. Today, we'll decode the ins and outs of insect repellent so you can keep your little adventurers safe outdoors. So let's jump right in. <laughs> Why do we need insect repellents? The answer to this question goes beyond the obvious annoyance of itchy bites. Many insects, unfortunately, are carriers of diseases, some of which can be quite serious. Mosquitoes, for example, can transmit West Nile virus and Zika virus. Ticks are notorious for carrying Lyme disease or rocky spotted mountain fever, depending on your geographic location. Therefore, using insect repellents does not only spare your child the discomfort of bites, but it also plays a crucial role in protecting their health. Repellents work by disorienting or deterring insects, essentially making your child invisible or unappealing to them. Think of it as a force field that keeps those critters at bay. By using the right insect repellents in the right way, you can ensure that your outdoor fun isn't marred by pesky bugs and the potential risk they carry. Choosing the right insect repellent. Selecting the right insect repellent for your child can be a task that requires some attention to detail. It's not just about the brand or the price, it's about the active ingredients and their concentration. Both the American Academy of Pediatrics and Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommend using insect repellent products that are registered by the Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA for short. EPA registered products contain ingredients like DEET, picaridin, or oil of lemon eucalyptus. The EPA offers an online tool that can also help. I'll be sure to leave the link in the video description. So, first things up, DEET. Let's take a closer look which you've probably seen listed as an ingredient in many insect repellents. First developed by the U.S. Army in the 1940s, DEET has been available to the public since the 1950s. Though it is considered quite an effective insect repellent, it comes in a variety of concentrations, which sometimes can be confusing, so let's break it down a bit. The concentration of DEET in a product indicates how long the product will be effective, not the strength of the product. For example, 10% DEET provides protection for about two hours, while 30% DEET shields for about five hours, and anything over 50% DEET doesn't prolong the protection. I would caution on going anything above 30%. And heads up to parents of newborns, preemies, and toddlers under two years old. Your little one's skin is extra sensitive and, and can absorb substances differently compared to adults and older children. So when it comes to DEET, I would use it only when really, really, really necessary and in small amounts. Remember, it's a balancing act. You're trying to keep them safe from insects carrying potential diseases while also protecting them from absorbing too many chemicals. When in doubt, don't hesitate to chat with your pediatrician because they can provide valuable guidance and it's going to be tailored to your baby's unique needs. Safety is always the number one priority, especially for our littlest ones. Next up, picaridin. Picaridin is a synthetic compound that's modeled after a natural substance found in the black pepper plant. It's odorless, less oily than deep, and doesn't irritate the skin as much. Just like DEET, the concentration of picaridin in a product determines how long you can expect to be protected from those pesky mosquitoes and ticks. To give you a perspective, products with 5% picaridin can keep you and your little ones safe for about three to four hours. Next up, oil of lemon eucalyptus or OLE. Oil of lemon eucalyptus, 
also known as OLE, is a plant-based insect repellent that's derived from the leaves of the eucalyptus citriodora tree. This is not the same as using a natural eucalyptus essential oil-based product. EPA-registered products containing OLE are recognized as safe and effective at repelling mosquitoes and ticks when used as directed. Their efficacy can be comparable to repellents with low concentrations of DEET. They can provide protection for a significant duration, though generally not as long-lasting as products with high concentrations of DEET or picaridin. It's important to note that products with OLE are not recommended for use on children under three years old. And this is due to lack of comprehensive safety data in this age group. Next up, natural repellents. Now, for parents who lean towards more natural alternatives, you're in luck. Certain essential oils can also be effective in repelling insects. These include citronella, cedar, eucalyptus, and lemongrass. While they smell heavenly to us, bugs don't seem to share the sentiment, which is great news for us. Keep in mind though that natural repellents often need to be reapplied more frequently than their chemical counterparts because they evaporate from the skin more quickly, reducing their duration of effectiveness. Also, while these are generally safe, they haven't been approved by the EPA for their effectiveness. Natural and alternative repellents can be a handy if you aren't particularly worried about serious insect-borne diseases in your area. For example, a short picnic in your local park where mosquitoes are more of a nuisance than a health threat might be a suitable situation to use them. But if you're in an area known for ticks or other disease-carrying insects where concerns like Lyme disease are real, it's best to opt for approved effective products such as those containing DEET or picaridin. Quick mention here, you might also stumble upon other products like repellent soaked wristbands or ultrasonic devices that emit sound waves designed to repel insects. These sound high tech, don't they? However, their effectiveness in repelling mosquitoes and other insects is it proven? Tips and extra precautions. All right, now that we have reviewed various insect repellents for your family, let's review best practices for using insect repellents on your kiddos. Remember, how we apply these products is just as crucial as choosing the right one. Here are some do's. Always, always, always read the product label and stick to the instructions and precautions. They're there for a reason. Opt for repellents in stick, lotion, or non-pressurized spray formats. They're much more manageable, trust me. And if you're using spray repellents, head to an open area to prevent your child from inhaling the product. Next, when applying, hit the exposed skin and outside of your child's clothing. Never apply underneath clothing. Always assist younger children while applying repellents and keep a watchful eye on older children using these products. Next, when you get back home, wash off the repellent from your children's skin with soap and water and don't forget to wash their clothes before re-wearing. Next, keep repellents out of your little one's reach to prevent accidental ingestion. This is important one. And if you're out with a baby in a stroller or carrier, you can actually apply mosquito netting, which can be an extra layer of protection, especially in your little ones that you may not feel comfortable wearing insect repellent on. And here are the don'ts. Number one, don't go overboard with the amount. More does not mean better. Just a light layer over your child's clothing and, and that will do the trick. Two, steer clear of pressurized container sprays to avoid accidental inhalation or eye contact. Don't spray rep repellent directly onto your child's face. Instead, you wanna spray some onto your own hands and then apply it on their face, making sure to avoid their eyes and mouth. Number three, don't apply repellent on their hands because as we know, those hands are frequently in their mouth or eyes. 
Number four, if your child has a history of breathing issues, such as asthma, avoid using repellent candles. The fumes may not agree with them very much and can trigger respiratory issues. Number five, don't put insect repellents on any cuts, wounds, or irritating skin because it can cause discomfort for your child. And lastly, avoid using combination sunscreen repellent products. Sunscreen needs to be reapplied a lot more frequently, which would then expose your child to too much insect repellent. By adhering to these tips, you'll ensure your little one is effectively protected from insects and minimize any potential side effects. And with that, we've wrapped up our guide to insect repellents for kids. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope that this video has armed you with some useful knowledge to keep your children safe during bug season. Remember, being prepared is the best way and ensure those fun-filled outdoor family adventures remain just that, fun. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor and hit that like button. And if you haven't already subscribed, and I'm not sure why, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you'll never miss out on future awesome videos. Lastly, if you know someone who could benefit from this information, don't hesitate to share this video. Remember, sharing is caring. Until next time, this is Dr. G wishing you and your little explorers a bug-free and joy-filled outdoor adventure. Stay safe, stay informed, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!